for this empowered session on how we can heal trauma so that we can build more resilience and self-love. I am your guide, Dr. Andrea Pennington. I am an American, and as I mentioned, I am actually coming to you from Cannes in the south of France. I've been here for 10 years, and this is home for me. Part of my background, uh, if you haven't already read my bio, includes um, work as a medical doctor, an integrative medical doctor, combining Eastern and Western therapies, specifically acupuncture and positive psychology along with traditional medicine. And part of that uh, included working with an intensive outpatient treatment program that I created at a wellness center in Washington, DC, or in the Washington, DC area. So I, in the very beginning of my career, starting about 20 years ago, I combined what I learned with acupuncture into a treatment model to help people who were struggling with addiction and eating disorders. And one of the things that I quickly realized through an integrative approach with doctors and therapists, and nutrition, and more acupuncturists, all of that in one setting, what we started to realize or what I realized was there were some people who experienced incredible trauma in their life and somehow they were able to not only bounce back, but they were able to bounce forward in what we now call post-traumatic growth. Like they took whatever lessons came from the painful events and they really bounced forward. But what was curious to me was the, the other part of that population who had experienced trauma and sometimes we call them big T trauma and little T trauma. We're getting away from that because big T traumas like experiencing violence, witnessing violence, serving in a war, uh, experiencing um, genocide or growing up as survivors of that. We previously would have called those big T traumas. And then the little things like surviving a divorce or being a military child that had to move and recreate friendships. Some people used to think of those as small traumas, but now we know that the way that the human brain and our nervous system works, all of those adverse experiences, particularly if they happen before the age of 18, they are tra traumatic. And depending on whether or not we had someone to help us process those traumatic experiences, we could still be affected by them, even into our adult lives. And by affected by them, what, what was intriguing to me as a medical doctor was seeing how trauma was a precursor for health challenges. So things like allergies and asthma, autoimmune conditions, um, diabetes, addiction. We also saw things like cancers. So there's actually an, an even longer list of health conditions that are tied to having an adverse experience of trauma or mistreatment early in life. And so if any of you are in that position, then you know that it's not that we can just have an intellectual discussion about what happened and, and think that we should be completely fine. In fact, what we know is that our bodies, our brains register these traumatic events and they are stored energetically within our cells. Now, we could actually look at quantifiable aspects. So I'm not talking about woo-woo, weirdo energy medicine. I'm talking about we can see specifically what happens to DNA changes when people have experienced trauma in their lives, particularly, again, from being in utero up to the first 18 years of life, there are changes that happen in, in the DNA and in our brain and in our nervous system. And so for people who have experienced some form of trauma, abuse, neglect, including things like uh, witnessing abuse, uh, moving house several times as a child, growing up in a divorced family, having a family member who had suffered with mental illness or who was using drugs, or was in prison or committed suicide. All of these are traumatic experiences for the human organism. So there's no shame in that, 
we also kind of have to just realize that we're all living this human experience. And even though we may be brilliant and we've got our degrees and we're super smart, the intellect does not trump the lower brain and the things that may have been stored before the intellect was formed. So today I want to help you embrace a new perspective on how you can heal the trauma that you may have experienced. And in particular, a lot of us are feeling really triggered with what's been going on in 2020. So from the natural disasters, from fires and floods, to political unrest, to of course, this global pandemic that has led to job loss and fear and social isolation and all of this uncertainty. There are a lot of people who are feeling triggered and by triggered, I mean just something in them is tweaked. They're feeling more anxious than they would have if whatever part of your body breaks down when you're a little bit fragile. For example, some people may find that they're having even more uh, irritable bowel sy symptoms or their insomnia, depression, or anxiety is flaring up, skin conditions. All of that being triggered by what's happened this year um, it's bringing, bringing old trauma back up to the forefront. Because even though our intellectual mind, you know, if you've been to talk therapy, for example, you may have thought that you should be over whatever happened um, from heartbreak to burnouts and breakdowns. And yet there is still the memory in our brains and in our bodies. So we have to be respectful of the fact that even as brilliant and wise as we are, part of what comes with inheriting this human organism is we have this ego and we have this nervous system that is primed for survival. And it's always gonna be on the lookout for threats to our survival. And so 2020 has, has created this alarm system to go off within our body, brain, and psyche. And that is a challenge and it can also be a gift. We can actually use this time to go within and truly face some of the things that we have otherwise been able to distract ourselves from. So sometimes we know that there's stuff in the subconscious mind that we really need to work on, but I gotta pay the bills, I gotta go to work, I gotta finish my degree, I'm you know, planning, taking care of the family. And what 2020 has brought us is an opportunity to face the things that we have not wanted to face without our normal coping mechanisms of staying busy at work or going to the pub or bar. Without those distractions, we're coming face to face with our feelings and our fears. And so it's with this sort of preamble that I invite you to look at this session as an opportunity to maybe just take one of the issues that you would like to work through. And I'm gonna guide you through a, a five-step process for addressing the trauma and being able to embrace it and yourself with unconditional self-acceptance and compassion and love. Because over the, the 20 years that I've been working as a physician and acupuncturist, working in, in the trauma field, as I studied the people who experienced trauma and didn't bounce back. They were the ones that, for whatever reason, they would either sabotage their own recovery efforts or something else would trip them up or they'd switch to another addiction. Studying the people who didn't have the resilience allowed me to really unpack and uncover what was underneath it all. And I could contrast that to the people who did bounce forward after experiencing trauma or or abuse or neglect. And the difference is partly a matter of our perception, which you and I can modify, but another part of it was accessing parts of the brain and the nervous system that actually connect us to higher states of consciousness. So this may get a little bit uh, out there, but bringing in the neuropsychology and even the the neurotheology aspect, like we know that our, our brains are wired to know God, 
or to have these spiritual experiences. And so what my experience has been with working with people with trauma is when we can get back to a state of recognizing that you are born perfect, whole and complete in the spiritual sense, you as a soul deserve to be loved, to be heard, to be seen, to express yourself, and to go after your dreams. When we can reconnect to that truth, healing can take place. And now with modern technology, we can actually help you get into those states of consciousness that help you return to that state of unconditional self-acceptance and self-love. Um, and when I say technology, one of the things that I do is neurofeedback, where we literally hook up electrodes to your head and guide you through meditative processes and, and visualizations that can prove to you that you yourself can control your brain waves. You can literally get into these deeper states of consciousness that allow you access to the subconscious mind, where we can go in, we can examine some of our past beliefs and programming and actually start rewriting it, healing that inner child, reparenting ourselves so that we can embrace unconditional self-acceptance and truly bounce forward as resilient. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. I am certainly interested to make sure that this is something that is relevant to you, but giving you that framework, I, I will see, uh, I will see how I can sort of make this general enough so that you yourself can choose which type of issue you find challenging so that we can address it. And then you, know, you can come back to this process again and again, if you like, so that you can really keep working on it. So in other words, I'm, I might suggest that for our session today, you don't necessarily go into the deepest, darkest trauma <laughs> because we only have 45 minutes left and I want to make sure that we can get you back to a safe place. Uh, but I'm gonna lead you through some of the, the, the processes. So thank you, Mary, for letting me know that you've had this experience of upheaval from this year um, and having been in a relationship for 28 years and that person cheating on you and that you left. Well, good, let's, we might even use this as an opportunity to get even more healing on that. And thank you, Nick Haynes, for seeing the gift and the trauma. So, and the reconnection that comes from it. So I wanna just give you a little bit of a concept, a framework, and then I'm gonna lead you through how we can identify which piece of your life you'd like to work on. And then last but not least, I will lead you through this guided meditation process so that you can experience it for yourself. Um, I've been teaching this attunement meditation, which is a five-step meditative process for bringing stress relief and calm to the body and brain to help people if they are dealing with addiction, but also to help work through the past to heal trauma. All right, does that sound good to everyone? Hopefully so. So glad that you all are here. I am gonna share my screen. Oh, nope. Actually, I cannot share my screen unless Shannon can hear me to enable screen sharing. But if not, then I will just talk you through what I need to do. So essentially, if we, if we think about how would you normally deal with your present discomfort? How would you normally try to aim for a positive future? For most of us, we think, okay, we've heard all of this, you know, take massive action out there. So many of us would say, well, I need to take action. So maybe I should model the behaviors of other people so that I can get better. Maybe you've heard that uh, affirmations could help you. So you're thinking if I, if I have the right speech and the right actions, that will impact my present and impact my future. But lying underneath actions and speech are decisions. And most of those decisions, we're not really conscious of. We're not consciously thinking about them. 
And under, underneath those formative decisions about who we are, what we deserve in life, what's possible, what is right and wrong, there are thoughts. And underlying those thoughts are feelings. And ultimately, as twisted as it all sounds, underlying those feelings are some fundamental beliefs. Now, again, we as humans have kind of in, inhabited a format that has this, pre -pro, this programmed self, the ego. And as I mentioned, the ego is only concerned with your survival. And so all of the survival-based reactions and assumptions that we might make, those impact our beliefs. And to contrast that, we also have the authentic self, along with your spiritual DNA, which includes your character traits, your soul imprints, your values, and even the you know, five elements of Chinese medicine and philosophy that impact who you are authentically in this lifetime. So we have the programmed self or the ego in contrast to the authentic self and our you know, spirit or soul. And those are both feeding into our beliefs. So if you really wanted to, in other words, impact your present and your future, rather than starting with actions and speech and even your thoughts, we want to get deeper into the fundamental beliefs about what you think you deserve, what's possible for you in life, and and what your position in the world is. So with, with that understanding, what I'm inviting you to do now is to think of one issue that is coming up for you now. This could be a fear of the unknown with what's gonna happen with 2020. Are we, for the Americans, is the election gonna make a difference? Is this virus gonna go away? Am I gonna find a new job? Am I going to find the love of my life? What are, the, what are the issues? So it could be a desire that you're going after. And what I want you to do is kind of identify what are the potential limiting uh, beliefs or blocks. Alternatively, if you already know that you have a specific issue or trauma that you want to gain some healing on, maybe as somebody mentioned, someone was betrayed or somebody stole from you, or you were the victim of abuse or neglect. Again, we'll, we'll try to not go too deep and dark since I only have you for another 45 minutes, but we could think of what is the, the issue that you'd like to explore and to heal. Bringing that issue to mind, uh, some of the examples might be that I just feel unworthy and Somebody was sharing this earlier, that this feeling of, I'm just not good enough. I'm not worthy of success. And so the idea of having to go out and find a new job was just paralyzing for this person. And so that underlying belief that I'm not worthy, or I'm not good enough, or I'm not smart enough, can you identify an underlying feeling or belief that you'd like to explore? And that's what I am going to invite you to do. And what we'll do is we'll go through the five steps of the attunement process. Now, typically what I would have you do if we were working on a, a session is typically what we would do is create a timeline of life events. Because if we're here in the here and now saying, I'm, I'm completely a, a fearful of my future. I don't have confidence that I'm going to be able to find jo a job or make money, or I don't feel worthy of love. It's probably not the first time you felt that. So normally what we would do is create a timeline, going back as far as you want, and try to identify the very first time you felt that feeling. Because often what we're experiencing here in the now was set up by some experience. So if you already know the traumatic experience that sort of initiated these things for you, we can go back to that. So what we will be doing is identifying a specific moment in time. And when we go through the visualization process, we will call forth your inner child or the inner version of you. If it wasn't childhood, it could have been five years ago, it's fine. We're going to call forth that younger wounded part of you. 
to go through this healing process so that we can return to that state of unconditional self-love and then move forward with more resilience, with that ability to use that experience for your good. So there are five steps to this process. The first is allow, which means we just allow whatever comes up to come up without judgment, without censoring it, without trying to shove it down or push it away, and definitely without judging ourselves for having any of these feelings or emotions. Step two is attune, and we're gonna tune into compassion. I'll lead you through this, and you will likely feel a shift in the energy in your body as we tune into love and compassion and literally bathe in that for that younger part of you. We will then move into um, aligning the mind. So align is step three. Align the mind with the mind of the divine. Step four is inspired action. And step five is appreciation. So this is what you can expect. What I'd like for you to do now is just get comfortable wherever you are. Feel free to sit down or lie down. Probably better to be sitting up so that you stay awake for this. But get yourself comfortable. We will begin by taking five deep breaths where you fully try to expand your lungs, expand your rib cage so that you fill your lungs with oxygen, particularly these upper lobes. Sometimes when we're stressed, we breathe too shallowly and that ends up creating a pocket of carbon dioxide in these upper lobes of the lungs. So maybe with your hand on your diaphragm or on your belly or on your chest, just take a deep breath in. Filling up and letting it out slowly. And with each exhale, just let go, let go, let go. Take another deep breath in. And with each breath in, we breathe in relaxation. And exhale slowly, slowly, slowly. Take a third breath in. And as we breathe in, we are initiating the relaxation response. Where the brain will literally send out signals to help lower blood pressure, our heart rate, so that we can bring ourselves out of the fight, flight, freeze, and appease mode into a healing mode. Again. And exhaling slowly, give yourself permission to just be here present. And one more deep breath. So we always begin with a breath to come into this present moment. And with step one of the attunement process, I want you to just allow yourself to settle in, feel your body, feel your connection to the chair, the ground, sofa, whatever you're sitting on. Allow yourself to feel your body. And just scan from head to toe. Is there any tension, any pain? Breathing in light. Just imagine you could actually breathe into the body, a light to focus on any area of tension or stress. And as you exhale, give yourself permission to contact that pain or that tension. Step one is all about allowing the present moment to be exactly as it is without judgment, without rejection. Now allow yourself to notice the thoughts and give them the right to be there. Sometimes when we engage in meditation, we wanna get into this state of bliss where there's no thought. 
but sometimes we need to just give them their permission to be there so that they can pass on. So just allow yourself to become the witness. You're witnessing what's in your body and what's in your mind without judgment. And for the next few minutes, we give ourselves permission to be here, to be honest, and to heal. This is your birthright. And today we are reclaiming that right. Now, what I'd like for you to do, again, with your eyes closed, if you feel comfortable, is just imagine that right now you are in a safe place. This could be a, a real place for you in your imagination, like your favorite mountain getaway. For some of my clients, they literally will close themselves in the bathroom because that's their one place of safety and security just for the next few minutes. But in your mind, you could also imagine an ideal safe place, which could be off in the clouds. There could be protectors around you so that you feel safe. If you need doors and locks, that's fine. But just imagine a place where you can retreat mentally to let down your guard, to not have to be worried about your safety or security. And in this safe space, this is where we will do our healing work. So take note of what would you have in your safe space? Are there blankets, nice sofa, maybe it's a pool? Is there any soft music playing or Maybe you're by a river and you can hear the water. What do you hear in your safe space? And what do you smell? Are there plants, or flowers, incense? Maybe someone's made you a fragrant tea or hot chocolate. What do you smell in your safe space? Can you taste anything? What would you have as a taste, something you could taste in a safe space? What we wanna do is engage the senses so that we can feel and anchor into our body this safe place to do healing. And now in this safe space, I invite you to welcome in a compassion figure. This compassion figure could be someone you know. It could be someone who's passed on, like your dear grandmother, or it could be a historical figure, a religious figure, a made up figure, Buddha, Yoda, the Christ, Muhammad, an angel, a saint. But just imagine that you could welcome in, into this safe space, a compassionate being. And this compassionate being is literally beaming waves of love and acceptance to you, giving you the permission to receive. This could be the highest and best version of you, you as the compassion figure. And I want you to imagine this figure sending out from their heart to you this wish. May you be truly happy. May you be free from suffering. May you be truly well in body, mind, and heart. 
and may you live peacefully and with ease. So just take a deep breath in and receive, receive these waves of compassion directed toward you, my precious friend. You are safe. You are held with compassion. And now I'd like for you to invite that tender part of you, could be a, a younger version of you, that experienced something that needs healing. So whether the emotion you're dealing with is grief or fear, bring forth into this safe space Invite that younger version of you to be present with you and your compassion figure. And let this version of you know you are safe here. You are protected. And you are loved. And in this experience of safety, I want you to invite this younger version of you to fully express what happened. What was it that led to these underlying beliefs and these feelings? Without judgment, let your inner child know that everything is legal. Like, even if they feel like they need to use bad words, let that part of you finally be seen and heard, understood and expressed. What happened to you? And as a result of what you experience, what are the beliefs and the assumptions that you took on? Is that the event that made you feel powerless? That everyone was against you? Or that you needed to be really good you needed to be perfect in order to be loved or accepted? What was the compensating behavior or belief that you took on? Did you take on the belief that it's not safe to trust other people? or a particular gender. It's not safe to speak up. Or even if you do speak up, people won't believe you. Did you take on the belief that you're not worthy of love or of success? Just allow your inner child or that younger version of you to fully express feelings, which could be anger, fear, disgust, the beliefs that they took on, the behaviors. And now ask, ask this younger part of you, what did you need? What did you need that you didn't get? At that moment in time, back then, what was it that you really would have wanted to have happen? It could be as simple as, you just wouldn't want the event, the abuse to have happened, or you would have wanted your parents to believe you, or 
maybe someone to rescue you. What did you want? What did you need? Everything is free game here. Allowing your inner child to speak exactly what they wanted or needed is totally legit. Now, can you invite this young, tender part of you into your arms or on your lap if, if it was you as a, a very young child? And while we're still tuned into unconditional acceptance and compassion, now you can recite the four phrases of the compassion meditation. So directed to this younger version of you that has just confessed all of the hurts and the ups upsets and disappointments and wishes. And let this tender version of you know, it is my wish for you to be truly happy. And imagine your compassion figure is also joining in with you, directing all of this compassion to your younger self. May you be truly happy. It is my sincere wish that you be free from suffering. It is my wish that you be truly well in body, in mind, and in heart. And may you be peaceful and live with ease. And now with your younger self still with us, still present in your arms, can you affirm to this younger version of you that you will now provide all of the things that he or she did not get? The protection, the love, the understanding. Tell this younger version of you that now you, as the responsible adult, you will provide what the others didn't. Your compassion figure can also do the same. It's important for this younger version of us to know that you're no longer alone. You no longer have to hide in the shadows. And all of those behaviors and coping mechanisms that you took on that aren't serving us now, it's safe to let those go because we can develop new tools and strategies so just continue to reassure this younger version of you that you've got their back. There are 10 traits of highly resilient people. And one of those is compassion. 
And studies have shown that if we've experienced some form of trauma or abuse, any of the adverse childhood experiences, if we experience those early on in life and we did not have a compassionate figure come to help us process, develop a healthy perspective to what happened or to rescue us, then there are certain circuits in the brain that are linked to compassion that may not have developed properly. But because of neuroplasticity, we can still learn how to be more compassionate. And that can help in the reparenting of that inner child. So by allowing the inner child to be heard and embraced with love and compassion, we're taking a step forward. And it is totally normal to have all of this love and compassion finally bathed on us. It's so normal to cry, to sob, to even to scream. It certainly was the case for me. I remember the first time I directed compassion toward myself and I just cried because of all the years I was carrying this burden of feeling like I needed to be perfect or be better or be strong. And so it's important for us to know the difference between true resilience and torture. So just allow that inner child to know that it's safe. You know, we've been bamboozled. We've been tricked to think that we shouldn't cry because crying is somehow a sign of weakness. But I can tell you as a physician, the day you were born, crying was a sign that you were alive. It's a sign that's reassuring to a doctor when you're born. And this should be reassuring to you that you have a voice and it is your right to use it. And this is your safe place to do just that. And now as we're, we're moving from step two, which is all about tuning into love and compassion, you can also direct that compassion toward your adult self. Not just your compassion figure directing it to you, but you directing it to you. So as you are embracing and healing your inner child, repeat the four phrases. May I be truly happy. May I be free from suffering. May I be truly well in body, mind, and heart. And may I live with peace and ease. And now make a commitment to your inner child that at any time, if you need to, you can return to this safe space for healing, to unpack, to reprocess what happened. This is a shortened version of this for time, but you can spend time with your inner child. And in this safe space, you can also invite in other archetypal figures, not just the compassion figure, but maybe you want to invite uh, a wisdom keeper, someone who could come in and give advice or wise counsel. Sometimes we even invite an inner superhero to come in and kick some butt and rescue us if that's what the inner child really wants present. But just remember and affirm to your inner child that you can come back here and they will always have a listening ear and an open heart to be truly seen, heard, understood, and believed. We believe you and we're here to heal. Step three of the attunement process is to align the mind with higher states of consciousness, align the mind with the mind of God or the divine mind, or if you prefer, just align your mind with peace. So it's literally 
letting go of that egoic desire to change things or control things and saying, there's got to be a peaceful solution to everything. And I'm willing to open my mind to peace. May my mind be guided by love. Even if it's only for the few minutes that you're willing to let go and surrender, I invite you to align your mind with the highest version of good for yourself and all beings that you can imagine. So whether we're dealing with something from long ago or just this year, it's tempting to instantly go into problem solving mode and try to fix. But sometimes we just need to be present with what is and let go of that fix it mentality so that we can get a download or an insight for what can truly move us forward. And then step four is all about inspired action. So with that open mind, we ask, what is the next right step for me? What is the inspired action I can take to move me forward? It may come to you as you're doing this process. It may come tomorrow or while you're chopping vegetables or in the shower. Just know that you can ask for inspired action, for insight. This is giving yourself permission to trust again in your intuition, in your inner knowing of what's really in your best interest. And the fifth and final step is appreciation. What can you appreciate and feel gratitude for right now? We can all be grateful for technology connecting us here today, for the beautiful people at Guidely. We can be grateful to ourselves, grateful for you showing up, being present. Maybe just grateful for the cushion that you're sitting on. Just, I want you to get in touch with that feeling of true gratitude and appreciation. And even if you could say thank you to yourself, thank you to your inner child, thank you to this inner compassion being. Thank you to life for helping you move forward. And all of your ancestors and divine beings that are present supporting you We move forward with appreciation so that we can keep our energy and vibration high, open to more healing. So this is a very short version of taking you through the attunement process. Normally what accompanies this is a life writing process. So I would invite you today when you finished all of these beautiful summit interviews, our keynote with Deepak and our closing ceremony, closing statements, or if you take a break, just write down what you experienced. Try to remember and go back to what do you feel in this safe space? What do you feel in your body, in your energy field? What was it like to tenderly welcome your inner child to express what he or she really wanted to express, but never did. And we would typically journal about, you know, in, our, in our life writing program, either a low point or a high point or a turning point. So in this case, you might be writing about that low point that led you to have those limiting beliefs. Because while doing the meditation is incredibly empowering, there's another shift that comes when we actually write or type what we've experienced. It's allowing new connections to happen in the brain between the hemispheres and definitely getting into the motor cortex of 
the brain that's associated with movement. So I invite you to do some journaling on this and you can return to this recording and do this five-step process again and again or download the, the, uh, the invitation for the 21 days of compassion meditation, which is part of the, the workshop you'll see on, on my page. But this is something that you can continue to do over and over. And particularly the writing I find is incredibly helpful. There are many, many ways you can use it. It's dialoguing with the inner child, writing to the people who may have hurt you or harmed you, whether they're living or not, whether you send them a message or not. It's, a, it's incredibly cathartic and healing. So I would be very happy to take any questions and any sort of uh, response that you may have experienced. Andrea, this is Jesse. Um, we'll need to, this has been beautiful. Um, I'm welcome to have another two minutes before we need to end the session so that we can roll into the next one as well. So we'll see if anyone has any questions, if that's okay. Excellent. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Nick and Mary and Corey. I'm happy to know that this process is good for you. So just know that all of this, all of this goodness is here for you. You have access to all of this healing within yourself, like literally. And the more that you do it, the more empowered you become. And it definitely will increase these levels of resilience. When I talked about the, the top 10 traits of highly resilient people, the number one is insight and awareness. So by doing the journaling and, and uh, doing the meditations, you're gaining awareness of things that have been hidden in the subconscious, but you're doing it as the author, not the victim. So um, going back to the Guidely uh, page that has my session, you'll see a link to the 21 Days of Compassion. Um, I guess I can type it up in here now. So the Compassion Meditation will be emailed to you. You can download it for 21 days. There's a different one every day. Um, so that you could just really let this sink in. So thank you all so very much for joining me here. It was um, just a joy to be able to connect and feel your energy all around the world. Really such a blessing. Yes, I think I...